Okay, we now welcome on very special guest. He is the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens, Super Bowl champion, and more importantly, the final token that we needed to collect to become a part of the Harbaugh family. It is John Harbaugh. Uh, it's great to have you on, but you know that you have to go up against your brother-in-law and your brother and your dad for guests on this show. I know. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, high, it's big company, but I'm pretty impressed you guys have now been ordained as part of the family. I mean, what does that mean? You know, there's certain obligations – I think, I think we that. get to come over for Thanksgiving yeah. and have Jim kick our ass yeah, in, I think in we basketball. Have to yeah. yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. And he, he will kick your ass. You will not you will leave a shell of the man that you were when I, you entered into the ring. Yes. Uh -huh. Actually, let me let me start with that. It's uh, a little bit of a easy question for you. Well, actually no, it might be a hard question. Do you ever think about uh Jim, you know, obviously always talks about how he drank milk and willed himself to yeah. be in the NFL. Yeah. What happened to you? I do. I mean, it's right, because I scoffed at that. Like, back in fourth and fifth grade, I scoffed. I made fun of him. I laughed at him. Mm -hmm. His belly was, like, bloated this far out, you know, after lunch, and he fell asleep, you know. <laughs> but look at him. He's six three and a half. You yeah. Know? And I, I, I mean, how many people come up to me here at the combine, like, dude, I thought you were a lot taller than that. Right. You know? Yeah. It's hurtful. And it's it's like a test case scenario. You If you you were the guy right. who didn't drink the milk. Right. He exactly was. Exactly right. Exactly Same right. Same jeans. That's what happened. So when did you top out? Where are you, 5'11"? Six feet? I, I'm a little, yeah, I'm close to six feet. Six feet. Okay. I was six feet for a while, then it kind of shrunk a little bit. Okay. Is that how it happens when you get older? So the, you I do, mean, you shrink. Like you yeah. get, you do get shorter. I can't afford to lose any inches. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to getting older. Um, so <laughs> we were talking actually before you you came in and sat down. Like it's interesting the path that you took to become a head coach because you're a special teams guy, right? You coach right. special teams for a while, and you don't see too many special teams coaches get those opportunities anymore. Like, why do you think that is? Are you not involved, for the most part, as a special teams coach in, like, the offense and defense? Or are you just, like, out in your own little meetings saying, <laughs> okay, kick the ball far? Or, like, why doesn't that happen more? No, usually the special teams guys are the guys that nobody wants to be around, nobody wants to hang with. They kind of shove you out there to your pasture over there and kind of get rid of the guy and mm -hmm. put him off to the side. You know, I like the way you said it, though. It's like, Special teams coach, like right. you were a special, special teams coach. It's throw to the know? game. Well, you get <laughs> named every time there's a, a you know Dave Tobe or someone who's yeah. who's like, hey, this guy could be a head coach. Like, well, yeah. John Harbaugh, he was a special teams coach, mm -hmm. right? So you live on. For you know that. what it is? It's it's guilt by association. You hang out with too many kickers, and people start <laughs> right. to think that you are one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, really, the truth of it is, I think these guys have been overlooked. I mean. There's been so many great coaches. You can go back. I mean, Pete Rodriguez, Frank Gantz. Hey, Dick Vermeil is a special teams coach. Mike Dicka was a special teams coach. Bill Belichick, he's a pretty good coach. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how he got his start, you know, and, and he, he got into defense and all that. But special teams coaches, really, the argument's pretty strong. They deal with the whole team. They deal with all the situations in the game. They're kind of – it's kind of like a head coaching – it's a mini head coaching job, you know. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of crazy these guys haven't gotten more opportunities. I'm always banging the drum for them, but – Usually the way it works out is you coach offense, you coach defense, I mean, secondary or running backs or tight ends and tackles or whatever I coached over the years. Then they say, who wants to do the punt team? And you're the guy crazy enough to say, I'll do it, you know? Right. Who wants to do the kickoff team? Uh, uh, okay, I'll do it. Nobody else wants to do it. And the next thing you know, you're a special teams coach. But, you know, God's got a plan. Yeah. And it worked out pretty well for me. Do you think uh, the kickoff is going to be gone in a few years? No way. No, no way. way? No, no. It's football. You know? Right. We've got to keep the foot in football. That's a good point. Well, Thanks, yeah. and, and yeah. I, the, <laughs> interesting, that. Well, yeah. the interesting thing is you have the AAF and, you know, they don't do a kickoff. So everyone's talking about the, you know, could the NFL ever get here? Yeah. And then you see a guy like Julian Edelman who wins Super Bowl MVP and he does a speech after. He's like, I got my start in this league because right. of special teams. Yeah, all the great players. I mean, there are a few guys, that, well, of course, quarterbacks, but even my brother covered kicks. He was a kickoff cover guy's rookie year. But the, the guys become really good linebackers and really good, really good tight ends and running backs. They start out, they're, they're football players first. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to tackle, you got to be able to block. The league's doing a great job, but we'll say this. I don't always compliment them on stuff like this, but they're doing a great job of cleaning up the plays that really do cause injuries. They're trying to make the helmets better, they're trying to make the shoes better, they're trying to do everything they can to keep those kind of injuries out of there. But it's a space game. It's an exciting part of the game. You know, people. some people love soccer. Some people don't love soccer. But the thing about soccer that's kind of exciting, it gets out in space. You know, there's movement. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. athleticism to it. Same thing in basketball, fast break basketball. That's what that's what special teams is. I mean, that kick goes in the air, and you got a great returner back. Corderell Patterson's back to return that kick. You, you know, if you're a football fan, you're on the edge of your seat. Mm -hmm. But then you've got to admire the guys that are willing to run down there, you know, 50 yards down the field and get off a block and make a tackle. And and what it takes to do that. So, I mean, if, 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 if you, yeah, I mean, we can start chipping away at football. You know, we could say, well, we don't like this, we don't like that. Pretty soon, you know what you're going to have? Flag football. Yeah, no football, right? Right. Uh -huh. and, and the people, and I'll be honest, the people that are hitting football real hard are the people that really would like to see football not as part of what we do. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that's, 
That needs to be kind of fought against. That's well, like Hank, our producer. Yeah. Our producer wants lacrosse to be the biggest sport yeah. in America. Yeah. Yeah. I like, love so, lacrosse, though. Yeah. Good yes. sport, lacrosse. Yes. But, we but you know what? How many concussions in lacrosse? Come on now. Let's talk about Big time concussions. Probably a lot. Concussion <laughs> probably a lot. Yeah. Those right. rinky-dink helmets that yes. they use. Yeah, yeah. volleyball, yeah. soccer. Soccer, like, leads the way in, in, in concussions. Yeah, Women's probably soccer, actually. That. Taught me that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, we, um, so we've been talking a lot about, you know, uh, the, how kind of the kickoff is being phased out a little bit. Um, especially, like, the new rules that they put in place really affected the onside kick yeah. portion of the game. Right. So, like, as a guy with a special teams background, that's got to be kind of frustrating. Yeah. It's like, here's this play that used to be yeah. successful, you know, 10, 12% of the time. Now it's down to, like, 4 or 5% of the yeah. time. Um, it, it, are there any ways, like, moving forward that you can see that, that it's going to be innovated a little bit to make it more successful? You're right about that. I mean, that's kind of the, one of the big bummers. I mean, you know, how are you going to get the ball back when you need the ball back? How are you going to gain a possession? And the fact that the onside kick is pretty much dead with the new rules, I do think they got to come up with something. You know, give a team a chance. Maybe you got to convert a fourth and 15 or something or a fourth and 12 or something, you know, just to get the ball back and regain possession. They should have a chance probably to do that because – there's excitement. I mean, if I'm down by two scores, two and a half scores, right. with four minutes left, you're pretty much done. Right. The game's uh -huh. over if you can't if you have no chance for an onside kick. Well, so. you should go for two when you score the first touchdown. We learned that this yes. year. Yes, you definitely should. Are you that. are you a big uh, analytics guy with yeah. that? When the yeah. if you're down 14 late, yeah. go for two the first right. time. Right. That's like a no brainer. But as soon as you do that, and you don't get it. You know, you're gonna get blasted by media guys like you. Two not guys. us. Not you us get anymore because we mocked learned. and made fun of. Well, actually, so I, let, let me ask you this. So I, we always have the theory that uh, guys, coaches in the NFL, don't take those risks if they aren't secure with their job was there yeah. a point in your career where you're like i can now start taking more risks on the field because i know that you know my owner isn't going to freak out and the media isn't going to freak out because yeah. my track record is proven you know it'd be hard to sit here and say like no but i mean really you got to find a way to like do the job you know if you're trying to keep the job that's the serious way to not have the job pretty quick so i think it's better to be bold to take chances I and mean, we tried the first ever fake field goal in a super bowl We've yep. done some pretty crazy things, you know, mm -hmm. all the way up. So I think you got. I think you're, I would rather have the reputation of someone that's willing to go for it. Yeah. You, if you're the scared guy, you can't. You can't be coaching. What was the adrenaline it. like when you called the first fake field goal in the Super Bowl? Well, I was kind of bummed because it was like nine yards, and we, we had it set up for five. But I was like, just screw it, we're doing it. You know, uh -huh. I, we got to try this. Yeah. Did you ever think about using? You your came kicker? up like a yard short. Yeah. yeah. You know. Did you think about using your kicker as a lead blocker like Nick Saban did? No, I never that thought was an about interesting that. strategy. Yeah, really? When thought. did he do that? I missed that. In the national championship yeah, against Clemson. That was, he, he had, yeah, was that a fake field goal and he led the way through yeah, there? Yeah, it was, it was a terribly like, timed. Was it nine yards or ten yards? Yeah, it was to get. so bad. His kicker was – it was great. You should actually check that out. <laughs> I, I haven't Nobody even seen that. Nobody has seen coming. Justin Tucker running like through the middle of the line as yeah. a pullback, just knocking somebody's ass yeah. off. Okay. Yeah, speaking like of that Super Bowl, do you ever do you ever look at your brother, like just catch him and like – he knows that you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing about it. Like, like, like over the years. I mean, well, you know how it is. You guys got brothers. Yeah, right? really. So over the years, like he. I mean, there were times when I when I kicked his butt pretty good, and there were plenty of times, probably more than he kicked my butt, because he's kind of a big guy. Especially when it got to the point where he got a little lower. So we were 25, and he was the head coach of the, or he was the the quarterback for the Bears. Got his first big contract. Got paid. And took us all on a vacation down to Amelia Island, you know. And it was great. It was nice. Fourth of July. Paid for everything. It got us out on the beach one day. And I'm, I'm really being grateful. I'm thinking, you know what? This, he's kind of turned the corner here a little bit. This is pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, we get out there. We're building a sandcastle with the kids. And next thing you know, he starts like, you know, we kind of work our way out into the water. His waves are coming. Big waves mm -hmm. are coming. And, and we're you know, wrestling. He throws a single leg into my right leg as hard as he can. <laughs> So I sprawl, full sprawl, cross face, right to his nose as hard as I can. You know, just smash him right in the face. Or he's strong. He stinks the thing, picks me up, and takes me to the bottom of the bottom of the deal. Like Sam, I see the sand come up around. It's dark, salt water, and all the air bubbles came out. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I get it. You yeah. Know. All right. But then he kind of keeps holding me down there, and the waves are coming. Holds me down. Holds me down. Holds me down. All right. I mean, I don't know if it was like a minute, but it seemed like 20 minutes. I'm thinking this is going to be it. He snapped, you know, he's gone. I've lost him. And he's he gonna be in jail for the rest of his life, but it's not gonna <laughs> help me. His brother, I'm yeah. done, you know. Yeah. So he let me up finally. Uh, and once I got my breath, he kind of gave me just what you just did. Right. He gave me the old, you know, like, all right, bro. I know, you know. Yeah, we know where it stands. Right. right? Even, yeah. And I had to live with that, like for the next twenty three years, mm -hmm. okay, until the Super Bowl. And the, now and now you now every it. now and then he gives you that look. Uh, Were you just you ever watch a show Bloodline? <laughs> You just described a scene from Bloodline. No spoilers. Yeah. Really? I don't that's think that's one very of the funny, though. One of the brothers actually kills the other brother. In yeah. The oh, really? Well, yeah. I mean, does it really have to come to that? I yeah. <laughs> well, Jim, I mean, Jim has told us when we interviewed him, the human body craves contact. So I can just imagine, <laughs> like, right. if you just brush up against him, he's like, let's wrestle. Yeah. 
Well, he took, he took, he took, he was, he was, he was going over top of Allison when she was five years old, pull rebounds away and put backs to, <laughs> uh, to win the family basketball game on Memorial Day. But now you have it. Now you have that look. Yeah. You can just always. give it to him. That's, that's that right. is okay. the ultimate trump card. It's kind of the ultimate one. Yeah. yeah. He's going to snap one day well, and he try to drown you again. He hasn't given, yeah, he, <laughs> but this time he'll be able to follow through with it. Yeah. He hadn't given up on that though. He's, he's planning on revenge or something. You know, there's a game yeah. somewhere along the way he's planning on winning. I'm right. Winning. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you miss coaching against him? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I miss him being in the, in the NFL. Yeah. Because, you, know, you know, you just had that, say, you watching the same tape, and we would talk about stuff, but, you know, like, you, you always tell when it got to the point where he, like, he was trying to get a little more than he was trying to give. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of knew where that was. It's like, you know, I know you're holding something back, buddy. Yeah. Right. So I'm not answering your question right, right. now. Right, right. So, That's fantastic. When we talked to him, we asked him when the last time he was in a fight, and we were thinking he would say, like, 25 years ago when I tried to drown my brother, something like that. <laughs> and he was, what did he say, like, six years ago? Yeah, he's like, yeah, there was a, a situation <laughs> a few years ago. In, in, in like, an Irish fast casual restaurant where I had to, I had to put a guy on his back. Yeah. Um, so we have to ask you the same question. When was the last time you were in a fight? It's about 25 years ago. Yeah. That's my brother. Yeah, that's, that's the appropriate, appropriate answer. answer. Yeah, yeah that's the appropriate answer. He got the famous fight, though, Jim Kelly fight. They're yes. like good buddies now, but, you know, that can never be forgotten. Yes, never, absolutely. Don't let that be stricken from the record. I, yes. I just remember why I brought up the whole uh, special teams thing. It wasn't actually because I was interested in your answer <laughs> is because I have a suggestion for you for the onside's kick. If you want to make it a higher percentage of, of recovering it, do more drop kicks. Mm. So in rugby, if you watch a kickoff in rugby, they sky it. You can sky a football, you can sky a rugby ball, and uh, it's essentially the same rule. It has to go 10 meters. Your team can recover it or knock it back. The offense recovers it probably like, I don't know, 25, 30% of the time. Give it a look. That's all I'm no, saying. I, uh, it's, here's the thing. It's like I, I, the good thing is no. I don't think any NFL head coaches really listen to you guys. So yeah, the yeah. true. Think it's the, the that's, good thing. That's true. Do they? I mean, I, I don't. For, uh, Mike Vrabel does. Mike Vrabel does. does. Yes. Right, McVay does too. What's does? up, McVay? Yeah, McVay. We're gonna get does. a head coaching yeah. opportunity soon because he listens mm -hmm. to our. Well, podcast. here's the thing. It's like here's the crazy thing. Like what you just mentioned. Like we actually just have that. You do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. The thing is, I don't need these guys to know that. You know. But okay. It's kind of in the playbook. Well, so. now yeah. this was smart because even if you don't have it, people will now. Have to they'll be practicing against it, but they won't know what it really is, and they right. have to watch rugby to figure it out. Right, there you go. Right, That's perfect. Okay, uh, I like that. That's really yeah. great, though. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I'll take all the credit when it's successful. Yeah, absolutely, and none of the blame. Is absolutely, none of the blame. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be like, what the hell is Coach Nick <laughs> out there? <laughs> Fire him. Fire his ass. Yeah, what is he doing? This is I'll too much. I'll call him sports radio in he's, Baltimore. Yeah. Like, we got to get Coach out of here. Yeah, he's too brash. Um, <laughs> so talking about your coaching career, we we were like doing some prep before. Andy Reid and his coaching tree. He has one of the most impressive coaching trees in the NFL when you look like across the NFL. What what is it about him that like gives, you know, guys a chance and, and helps foster that? I think it's his press conferences. You know, he's pretty <laughs> dynamic with the press conferences there. Um I don't know. I just think he's really great. You know, it's uh we are just with him for the last three days. We got all these meeting meetings and stuff like that, and he's still going strong. You know, he's just He's just because how well, you know what it is. He's how normal he is. He's mm -hmm. like a normal guy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if he's normal, just being more normal makes him great, I guess. Yeah. Right. But it is crazy when you look at it. Like the head coaches in the league, the guys who've had yeah. chances. Oh, you yeah. know, he, he had, had like ten guys. He had the coach mm -hmm. of the year, Matt Nagy. You yeah. know, with the Bears. You yeah. know, so it's it's impressive that he's able to have this many guys. Yeah. You know, be under him and then and then come out and flourish in the NFL. Well, his first staff there. I mean, we had guys like Pat Shermer was on that staff. Brad Childers was on that staff. Um, uh, I mean, just guy after guy. I, I, off the top of my head, I guess I could sit and really think about everybody. Yeah. I think we had Bron Rivera, Steve Spagnola. We had like five or six head coaches on that staff. Right. Andy strikes me as a guy, and I've always heard about him, that he uh, he takes input from everyone around him. Yep. So he doesn't have an ego. Yep. Uh, he, you know, if somebody has a good idea, it's like an open door policy. Yep. Like he'll implement anything as long as it works. Yeah. How do you think he's a, a guy like him is able to balance that with also at the end of the day, you're the dude. You're the guy in charge of everything, so you have to, you know, he has to tell people what to do, even if he's, you know, using their ideas constructively. Yeah. How do you think he's able to balance that? Yeah, he does. He does it well. Like he's, he's, he can say no. You know, he can, he can get after you. Like he's got the mustache twitch thing. Like when he gets mad, he doesn't really chew you out, but his mustache starts twitching real fast, mm -hmm. and you're like, it's like, okay, I'm gonna just back yeah. off right yeah. now. So he's got, he's got the teeth. You know, he can chill the fangs, uh -huh. but. Uh, it's yeah, like he, a cat sticking up the hair on their back. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like stay away. He's a big guy. Yeah, you know, he's a big dude. So you got to be careful. Uh, Does he, how many steaks has he eaten in front of you before? Because we heard a story that he, ate, he ordered two once at at one dinner. 
I, I, yeah, I can't comment on that. Okay, but he, he likes probably, to eat. Yeah, There's no question. Two, two. Uh-huh. I mean, that's a that's just an alpha move. Yeah, if like everyone orders one and he's orders two, orders two. does he order the same time that. or back or back to back? I think same time. Yeah, you got to go stack, stack them. them. Yeah, yeah, you stack go them. Like right, bring them out. Right. Yeah, bring <laughs> this one out 15 minutes later. That kind of deal. So yeah. you, Andy Reid has a coaching tree. Wait, you, I, have, I have one more question about Andy Reid. Okay, that's okay. Have you ever seen him not wearing shorts like at practice? He seems like a big shorts guy to me. Yeah, even yeah, he is a big shorts guy. He's cold. He never gets cold. He's a guy that doesn't get cold. I'm like freezing out there. Like I'm shivering. I'm so cold. He never gets cold. Uh-huh. Never gets cold. Yeah, yeah, the offices are real cold. Yeah, yeah, you got to like dress that. warm in the offices. I like that. that. Um, so he, so he has a coaching tree. You actually have four. Was it four coordinators that have gone on to be head coaches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. which People is the most that. in yeah. the NFL. Well, I get I get criticized all the time for having all these offensive coordinators. It's like, good. you know, they did pretty good. You right. Know? I right. Mean, so how does that? How does the process work Not when you them, have right. a guy who <laughs> <laughs> have a guy? I saw, I saw the look yeah. at you. Yeah, yeah, I was, no, yeah, no, yeah no, you're smart. You just said something. So, but how does the process work when you have a guy and you know that like he, he might be destined to be a head coach? Is that do you give him the leeway to be like, hey, I want you to go out there? Or you you hide if him? he's successful, you want to keep him. You want to just hide him, like put right. him away. Don't let him talk to the media. You right. Know, I've always him wondered him that. In a room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you want him to be head coaches. They're gonna get. They're gonna. They're gonna get found anyway. I mean, one thing about the NFL: as soon as you do something, as soon as you have some success, you're the hot guy. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to give you a chance. So you know, we had defense. Chuck Pagano is another guy that had a chance to be head coach. So it's like, you know what? If, if it, I want guys to get a chance, even yeah. coordinators. A lot of coaches hold their guys back from being coordinators. Like they won't. They say, and I understand it. Like a club will say, we give you a long contract. Then you know we want you here. We're giving you security. Then you know we we have you kind of you know right. And I don't think I don't think when you do that when you start denying people an opportunity to be coordinators, I don't think you have real good morale. I, I can't yeah. imagine a guy be real happy right. You know and try to do the best he can do. So if a guy has a chance to go be a coordinator for the most part, unless you have plans to make him your coordinator real soon, I think you should give him a chance to do that. Yeah. So speaking of like uh, the offensive side of the ball, was it uh, on purpose that you decided to like go back to like 1950s yes. football today yeah, this exactly. year? Exactly. Yeah. 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 It was, we were thinking about like changing some of the, but the league won't let us change the helmets. And yeah. No face mask. Just never pass it. <laughs> right. what, no, in a serious way, like Lamar Jackson had a you know very good rookie year, but there's clearly more there. Mm-hmm. What does success look f- like for him next year, like in terms of throwing the ball? Yeah. Well, it does. I mean, you got. He's got. You know, I'd say it's you know 60 at least minimum 60% completion rate, you know, because we're going to be throwing the ball downfield. So it's not going to be a dink and dunk offense. Uh, he can make short throws and he has to make, you know, you got to complete those at like 85%, yeah. you know, so he's got to do that just like every other quarterback. I know he can do it. But the thing about that is it's like, okay, we can dwell on that, you know, and we'll see. I mean, you never know with any of these guys. I mean, tell me about all the other rookie quarterbacks. I mean, who's standing up pounding the table saying they're going to be great except for Mayfield because they've already seen it. Okay, right. Allen. Yeah, Josh yeah. Allen's Josh our Allen. He's our friend. He's a friend. So, yeah, he's, so he's, he's I'll have to defend him. I like yeah. him. Got a good story yeah. about him. Okay. And Baker's a friend too. So yeah, Baker's awesome. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so we just got to, you guys got to, you know, got to tackle him in the pocket. Yeah. But Josh who comes on our sideline and he's running over there and, 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 he, and he, he comes, gets smashed into the sideline. And, and like, you know, our, our guys, nobody hit him. Nobody did. But, you know, the guys aren't exactly getting out of the way. Mm-hmm. So he kind of ran into one of our guys, Matt Judon. So he gets up and calls, calls Matt, like, gets right in his face, you know, and like pops right up. You know, the rookie is like his first start last year. And he gets right in his face. This is the opening game. And yeah. calls him a name, you know, mm-hmm. that you shouldn't call a, a, a grown man. Yeah. You know? And all of a sudden, our, our bench was like, ah, you know, on top <laughs> of it, you know, like, you know, we're, you, we were cool with you until you said that, you yeah. know, you know, and so I just said, dude, you got to get out of here right now, you know, <laughs> but he respected him. You know, he was not afraid. Right. He came flying into that side. He's a big guy, too. Yep. Yeah. He, he, he does Very not tall. back off. You know, yeah. I think he's yeah. got, I think he's got some fire. Yeah. I yeah. like that. So uh, back to Lamar real quick. So he. Obviously had some success, right? Right. He was pretty good his rookie year, uh, doing a lot of things. Now you have to expect him to step into, yeah, yeah. you know, being able to expand the playbook a little bit. How yeah. much of that is going to be you um, kind of working with his skill set and how much of it is going to be you expecting him to improve certain mechanics, certain things right. to fit your existing playbook? That's a great question. I, Thank I, you. You know what, probably, question. you know, to put a percentage, I mean, it's got to be like 50-50. I mean, to me, it's on us as coaches. Like, our job is to make sure that we do everything we can to create this offense that, I would say that, well, the league has never seen before since, like, 1950. Mm-hmm. So, like, we have to, you know, what comes around goes around. You know, it's, it's not evolution. It's revolution. So Ooh. there's nothing new. Write that know, down nothing like that. never That's new. Yeah. That down. Right, yeah. right. It's Copycat check, League. Yeah, it's, well, it's Ecclesiastes, too. You know, it's been around for a while, too. But oh, yeah. That's yeah. what it talks about. Shout so out so check that out. Yeah, throw <laughs> it in there. Don't forget. Uh-huh. You know, he's got some pretty good ideas <laughs> yeah. over the years. Yeah, yeah. I invented the years. original yeah. East Coast offense. Yeah. Yeah. But the other part of it's him, too. And, you know, the thing I like about Lamar is he's motivated guy you know and he and he, he knows he's a quarterback 
and he's not going to be told that he's not a quarterback. And all the, all the naysayers out there that want to sit here and say, dude, you're not a quarterback, he's going to be like, we'll see. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll see about that. So right. his major competitor is going to do everything he can do to be the best quarterback he can be. And, you know, he's going to be able to throw the ball just fine. Also, when he takes off running, you know what I mean, you better, you better be ready for that too. Yeah. And so that's going to open up, you know, the whole offense. Yes. You, you are going to have to adapt to a new offense without your uh, best wide receiver, Joe Flacco, though. <laughs> like, I, did you tell him not to even look like he was giving a shit when he was playing wide receiver? You know how bad that is? Like, even his wife, Dana told him that that was really bad like she was embarrassed by it you know what i mean but here's how joe is joe joe i'm sure will hear this at some point in time it doesn't nothing phases joe yeah like you can't really make joe feel bad no matter what you say to him no nope, can't make him feel bad so even dana couldn't pull that one off yeah i mean pft i don't know if you know this about him but he basically started the whole is joe flacco elite conversation really yes, yes. so i have to ask you was he elite man that's tough you know elite elite Elite, elite guy, elite, uh-huh. elite, okay. elite person. Absolutely elite. Elite, dude, elite guy. Yeah, yeah elite. you probably saw our Super shirts champion. in your, yeah. Yeah. In your locker room. In your locker yeah. room. There no, were some shirts. Yeah. yeah. Sizzle had them? He Sizzle was wearing brought the, in a bunch of them. Yeah. Elite. Really? Those were our shirts. Yep. The Joe Flacco mm-hmm. face. Yeah. So that's he my, was That's elite. my quarterback. Won a Super Bowl. Yeah. I like that. That's yeah. my quarterback. So he won a Super Bowl. That was my quarterback. Follow-up question. You also cut Danny Woodhead. So between getting rid of... You kind of look like Danny Woodhead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's the nicest thing. Danny's like one of my best friends. He's been on our show what? five, six times, something yeah. like that. Um, so why do you hate Danny Woodhead? I love Danny Woodhead. You know what's crazy about that? Like, Danny Woodhead and I worked out together every morning. This guy's like a pull-up machine, Teacher's okay? pet, kind of? I didn't think so. Okay. I didn't see it. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I was... Well, it didn't work. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, there you go. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I felt like he liked me. I yeah, guess yeah. not. Because here's the deal. As much as I, I love Danny Woodhead, Danny Woodhead's not talking to me since, okay? <gasps> he hasn't spoken to me since. And, and I have to say, I'm not the general manager, so I don't actually cut the people. But, right. but you know, the head coach does have some influence. So I, I get it. You know what I mean? We'll he probably feels that. like it was on me. Do you yeah. want me to call him? Call we'll him. Fix him. That. Tell him he is not. I have not talked to him since the yeah, day it happened. I right texted right him. Right we'll didn't even text it. me back. He will fi- right we'll now. fix it right now. Yeah, Absolutely. I felt, I felt bad. <laughs> it was hurtful. <laughs> All right, ask a question, Big Cat. Well, uh, do, what do you want to – you were talking about the refs yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Uh, how can we fix it? We're I mean, we're football fans at the core, and we want it to be the best game ever. We'll we'll hold on to that question while he calls Danny Woodhead. Let's see. I hope he doesn't <coughs> duck me. That would be that'd be this tough. Yeah, this is going to be really tough. He could be uncomfortable. He's a big phone call oh, guy, though. He's a good guy. Hey, Danny, what's up? Um, I'm here with your old coach, Mr. Harbaugh, and he says that, he says that uh, you haven't spoken with him in a while. And I, I was standing on the table for you and saying like, "Hey, why'd you cut my best friend, Danny?" And so he had nothing. He had nothing but nice things to say about you, so I wanted to play matchmaker and get you guys back together because he seems like a good guy. Hey, well, that's good. It's, 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 nice. it's nice to know that uh, he was the reason. <laughs> what did he say? It's, it's nice to know that, was the reason. that you weren't the reason. Yeah, he's of course. Right here, he's right here, Danny. I'm right here. Yeah, he's yeah. right here, Danny. It's not my fault, Danny. Hey, what's up, Harks? How, how, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this oh you, didn't think I, you didn't think I'm I was here. Good. Yeah. I'm doing Oh, That's good. This is great. This is a great. Moment. No, I love you. I told him. I told him you're a pull up machine, man. Every morning we're working out in the morning. You were just killing those pull ups. Hey, I, you know, I, I try. You know, as those guys know, I, I just try to try to work hard and get a little grit out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, the spread heart. the grit. D- hey, Danny. <laughs> uh, last question for me. What people are saying that you're a little bit of a teacher's pet, trying to work out with the coach in the morning. Is that true? <laughs> I didn't say that, Danny. It wasn't me. Harps knows that I was, I was the last thing from teacher's pet. Yeah. <laughs> I could vouch for that, actually. He knows, not, not, that I, not that I like to fire him up or, or get him angry, but I I just I had no, I had no reasons to do that. <laughs> okay, right. well, Danny, we, we miss you. We'll have you back on the text, show soon. Text coach. Yeah. Text yeah, coach. Text me, Danny. Text. Yeah. All right, sounds good. All right, see you, man. It was great talking to you, Dan. Bye. That's great. There we go. We put, That's awesome. put it back right. together. You guys are like look peacemakers. Look yeah. people. Yeah. 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 Put it all back together Blessed right there. Blessed are peacemakers. Uh-huh. It's in the Bible, too. Um, all right, don't, <laughs> dodge, don't dodge the uh, ref question. So how do we yeah. fix it? It's easy. I mean, okay, so you're fans, right? You guys yes. are watching the game. Fact. And you see the, you see the play, the, the, the Rams-Saints play. Yep. How long would it take for you to throw your flag? Half second, right? yeah, because I done. bet on the I bet on the Saints, yeah. so I okay. really needed that. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, it's like I, I just think that the officials they have a tough job. I mean, they're down there; it's real time. Things happen fast. They're still communicating. They'll still stop. They'll still take time to try to get it right. So let's put an official up in the box. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be a replay guy. He doesn't have to have any more power than anybody else. But just make him the sky judge. 
Okay, and let him, let, him, let him officiate the game from up there, too. He doesn't have to be looking at holding and all the little ticky-tack stuff, just the big stuff, just the clear, obvious stuff. He can, he can talk to the official and say, hey, I got an obvious pass interference there. Throw your flag on that. You know, hey, if it mm-hmm. turns out that he's wrong, they can always pick up the flag. They do that all the time. But let's clean this stuff up. You're right, because it's, it is, it is uh, something we kind of forget that how fast the game moves, yep. and the refs are in a situation where if something happens and you, and you miss it even if for a split second, you can't go back, right. you know, if, especially a play like that that you can't right. review. Well, I'm not one to sit here and say the refs are terrible and they're bad and they stink and all that like some people will. Right. But Because but, they're not. I mean, it's a tough job and all that. But, but you know, we got to help them. Yeah. You know, and the fans aren't too happy when they come out of the game feeling like the, 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 end, the result's not fair. I mean, you look at what happened to boxing. You know, people don't think boxing was, was with the, you know, they feel like it was fixed. Right. right. Okay. It still is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It probably always was. But football's not. You know, football's a fair game. But they can't be thinking that the, the, that the referees are biased or that they're incompetent. Right. Three of them the had spent time in Los Angeles over the previous 15 years. Though. I don't <laughs> know if a, you know that. Yeah. It's a big scandal the that game, was going it was on. So, it was mean that people picking it apart. threw that out there. But, you know, yeah. you're right. You're I, absolutely right. I agree with you. It's, um, it's not like these guys are bad officials. They're right. the best officials in the world at football. Right. It just so happens it's, it's extremely difficult to referee an NFL game down on the field level with all these guys flying around you. Yeah. I so agree with that. I mean, it's like our obligation, you know, it's like from the, co- the coaches are all for something like this, but to me, the league, it's, it's the, it's their obligation to help those guys be the best they can be. You know, mm-hmm. that's their job. Mm-hmm. So let's it's, listen. It's, it's forward thinking, man, we're behind all the other leagues with, with using technology. So just clean it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also like how there are probably a bunch of referees at home being like, yeah, get them. Yeah. You tell them, John. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. So you're, yeah, exactly. They'll be extra nice to you next year. Yeah. yeah that's always worked out well for me. As yeah. You guys know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've been real, I mean, we've been great on the sideline with the officials. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Real absolutely. gentle conversation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many pairs of, well, not pairs, how many mock turtlenecks do you own? And are you mm. obsessed with mock, mock turtlenecks? turtlenecks? You have a lot of mock turtlenecks. Like during the game and stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I have no mock turtlenecks at home. I have them like in my locker because I get cold. I got a long neck. See how long You it do is? have a long neck. Like, yeah, like, it's, a, it's a thick neck. It's a hard neck. It's a, I always had a good thick neck, but yeah. it's like, it's long and it's like, I mean, you're under, it's just shy of six feet tall with a long neck. Yep. Mm-hmm. Where are your shoulders at, you know? Probably have the shoulders of a 5'7 guy, you know? So yeah. my neck gets cold. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of heat through the neck. That, uh, that's your signature, though. At least you have, like, a signature look. Where, you know you know it's NFL Sunday when you see John Harbaugh walking down the sideline wearing a mock turtle mask. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's absolutely. Cool. Uh, so the for your family, all coaches, do you guys call each other coach? No. What if you're walking – and someone says, Coach, will all of you turn? Yeah, everybody looks. Everyone will right. look? My, yeah. my mom even looks. Yeah, uh-huh. I would say. I mean, you guys are all coaches. Is, is it? Do you ever, you know, trade secrets? Not secrets, but, you know, take stuff from Coach Crean or your brother? Or, like, are you able to, to sit down and talk about games and have them help you yeah. how you coach? We actually do a lot of that. I was calling Tom complaining about the free throw shooting of the Bulldogs right now. I want to see some better free throw shooting, you know? Yeah, so That's a big thing for yeah. him, too. Yeah, he, he was kind of mad. He, yeah. He appreciated it. But, <laughs> but no, I, he gave me a thing on attitude, like a, like a little uh, four sentence deal on attitude. He sent it to me, and he came up with it. It's really good. I'll send it to you guys. He okay. sends me stuff every now and like yeah. motivational stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah. So I sent it to the team. I mean, gave him credit. I mean, Todd, yeah, we do that all the time. Yeah. yeah. My favorite thing he ever taught us was get ahead, stay ahead. That's yeah. Jack Harbaugh. That's yeah. straight oh. stolen from Jack Harbaugh. Wow. Tom, gave, Tom took credit for that? Yeah. Tom, Tom. Tom. Uh-oh. Oh, Tom. Yeah, he's listening to it's this straight right Jack now. Straight Jack Harbaugh oh, yeah. right there. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. What, what, do you, uh, what about your brother and uh, this, the way this last season ended? Did you talk to him after that Ohio State game? Because it feels like he's, you know, not teetering, but people get anxious in, in yeah. Michigan, and he's had success everywhere he's gone, yeah. and they just want to beat Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, it'll happen. You know, I mean, you don't get everything you want Confident. right away. I feel like I feel like Ohio State gets blown out by Purdue, but it's a mid mid season game, and then we forget that. That's and, what needs you know, to happen. You know, I mean, Jim Jim he had a great run there, but now you, you lose to Ohio State in the one last game. You have your, you play probably your worst game in well, in a big stretch there mm-hmm. against big teams. They played all those big teams, and now all of a sudden, you know, the, you know, not getting anywhere, can't win the big one, and all that. Um, Urban had a little head start on him too, and I got yeah. a lot of respect for Urban. You know, they they've done a great job, but he got there sooner. You know, so they were a little bit ahead of Jim when he got there. I think you just hacked it though. I think that uh, Jim needs to schedule Ohio State in like mid October in West Lafayette. <laughs> yeah, there you and go. Then he'll get it. That's him. right. Yeah, that's a, that's and he'll a get thought him. right there. Right there. <laughs> uh, who do you think wins in a uh, battle royale? The Harbaugh's, and I'll give you Tom. Tom can join in with you yeah. guys. Or the Gruden's. 
Oh, the Harbaugh. It's not even close. Wait, you don't you didn't let me finish. Deuce Scruton oh. is also in the mm. factor for it. Who's I don't even know who Deuce Scruton is. It's a strength it's, guy. It's John. Yeah, it's John Stone. Wait, is it a weightlifting contest? Five, yeah. five foot four, about 210 yeah. you didn't pounds. Let me is this a strength conditioning? Is this like a deadlift Wait, you didn't let me finish. Okay. Uh, the Ryan brothers are the refs. Mm. I, I don't care. Okay. We'll take on the Ryan brothers, too. <laughs> not, I okay. mean, they're, you know, in a wrestling match, probably not. They're kind of, they've got... They're a little got bigger. Boys. They're a little bigger. Slight yeah. advantage. Uh -huh. you, know? you guys are more mobile, though. You guys we are like high flyers. You can go off the top rope on them. Well, that's what you do. You keep them moving. You wear them out. Then, they, you know, they can't lift up their arms, and you take them down. I don't yeah. think Jim Harbaugh would lose in a fight to anyone, ever. I've never seen him lose He'd never give up. Never sees undefeated. If it, yes. If it was in the ocean, too, I feel like that's yeah. an easy win. <laughs> Dude, I don't, I don't even think that's Rob, Rob Ryan can't swim. Yeah, they're I don't not think seafaring. He can swim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rob, we've had Rob on the show. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely, not, he doesn't seem like a guy who wants to get too deep in the water. Yeah. Well, his hair has got, you know, you got to yes. keep it right. That's right. right. Yes. That's yes. Right. yes. Yeah. That's uh, pretty great. You got another one? Yeah. Is RG3 going to play this year? Mm. Yeah. I hope he plays for us. Yeah. He's a free agent. Oh, is he really? Yeah. What well, about sign oh, right so about, well, yeah, He's can't our free agent, so I think I can. We can't. Yeah, he's we, we won't tamper yours. with him. Yeah. Right. But um, in the preseason, he actually he looked pretty good, didn't he? He did. He did. Yeah. He, he actually did. He was able, like, he was putting the ball on a dime. His accuracy was yeah. up. I'm always going to have a soft place in my heart for RG3 yeah. because when he came into the league as a rookie, like, I haven't been that excited about a football player in a very, very long time. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, he had his injury issues, went away. But it actually looked this year like he helped himself. He helped his career. Maybe got like a little second window. Yeah. That, to me, you're right. I mean, it's a good observation because even in practice, he looks legit. I mean, this guy's a former first pick in the draft, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't he the first pick? Second. 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 second? It was yeah. luck. And then yeah, we're still debating which RG3. one was better. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You know, I mean, RG still got time to make his, make his run, you know, but he was good. He was good in practice. He was good in the preseason games. Um, you know, I, I would say this. I think, you know, a lot of people might chuckle at this, but I would say this. His best football is ahead of him. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. I mean, he's a quarterback. He's a pro. He works at it, and he when he goes out there against your defense, we had the number one defense in the league. He's trying to pick no, the defense didn't. apart. Yes, we did. The Bears yards. were no, no yards. yards okay, yards. but in all like all DVOA, like all the okay, nerds, nerd. all right. like the yeah. Bears were don't listen two to him. Yards, so you can, you football can guys back. like me and you. I mean, yards. yards is kind just of been, yards. yards. We're just gonna go yards. Well, no, I, yeah. I agree with you. Yards, is, but, but I would say this though, it's kind of been the standard for like the last hundred years. I mean, football. points yeah. I think matter too. Yards is more like points per game. The Bears number one in points. Yeah, pretty sure they were. We'll play the Bears defense against our defense right now. That would actually be a great football game. No, there's not actually no football involved. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe it's just high, tackling each other. The Bears, could, yeah, you can figure it out. Well, maybe you have to play offense like as a defense. You could figure something. Oh out. yeah, that yeah, would work. You know, we could. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of your defense, did Ray lose? I like your I like your feisty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I'm just stating facts. So it's not even as you see them. Yes, as I see them. Right. <laughs> yards. Did, uh, <laughs> yards. <laughs> did you ever understand what Ray Lewis was talking about? Just in general. Okay, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, I got the gist, basic gist of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Joe, Joe, Joe has fun with that. Yeah. Did you, yeah. you did you go to his uh, Hall of Fame induction? Yes. Were you like, is this ever going to end? I was mesmerized <laughs> by it. I was mesmerized by it. I mean, I love Ray, and I do love Ray. And I will tell you what, Ray, Ray is like, a, in all seriousness, sort of. But in all seriousness, he's a man of great faith, mm -hmm. and he has a great message, and he impacts a lot of lives, man. He takes his time. He's on. He's on the. He, you know. He is seriously, and it's not like, like star people that like some people like want to have the phone numbers of guys like Danny Woodhead on their phone, and yeah, that's stars, a kind of a big yeah. star, yeah, you know. Yeah. But this guy, he's he's on the phone with kids, kids who are sick, you know. He gets relationships with them. You know, he's a really good-hearted person. You yeah, know? and mm -hmm. he does give a pretty good talk, a pretty good fire-up speech. He yeah. does. Like when I hear him talk, if I was in that locker room, I would be ready to run through a brick wall, but I wouldn't know why. Yeah, right, you know? right, right. That's fair. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Um, all right, my last question. Uh, do you think who who who's going to retire first, and which rival do you hate more, the Steelers or the Patriots, Tom Brady or Ben Roethlisberger? That's a level we're we're delving into a depth level of hate here. It's really hard to mm -hmm. hard to gauge. That's what know? I love because it's I true. Mean, hate. How do you measure yeah. that level yeah. Of, yeah. Of, of disdain? You yeah, know? that's what makes football fun. highly respect. You know both because they're both great, but disdain level is really up there. Not as people. Yeah, but as, as play during the game. Yes. Yeah, you want to just. Do whatever kind of damage you can. So who gets the anger up more, the Steelers or the Patriots? Probably the Steelers because we play them more all the time. You know, mm -hmm. so you have more opportunities to get to get it juiced up. But when you play the Patriots, it's usually pretty big. Yep. We yeah. got them coming up again this year. So I tell you what, after the after the after we play them this year, I, I can maybe weigh back in on that. Re ask mm -hmm. the question. Because it's yeah. coming. Yeah. 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 I still storm think, is coming. Yes. I still think back to that. Uh, I forget what year it was. Maybe 2013. Was it? Um, it was in Foxborough. Tight end dropped that that touchdown pass. 
was 2011. It was 2011. Lee Evans. Yeah, Why did yeah Lee, Lee Evans. Lee that's Evans, right. Wisconsin. Evans. Yeah. Shout um, out. Five, he I scored think you guys five touchdowns won. against Michigan State. I yeah. was there. I think yeah. you guys yeah. won, won the Super Bowl right. that year. <laughs> yeah, we, I was, really, that was probably our best team, 2011. Mm -hmm. you know, most talented team. We're probably our best. We, we were probably better than the 2012 team. Interesting. Um, did you guys actually back up a Brinks truck when you signed Joe Flacco to that extension? <laughs> That would have been funny. I don't know how those. I don't know how the money's really exchanged. Yeah, yeah. That would have been awesome money. if there was a, a truck that was just in reverse. Yeah. He went to he went to McDonald's though. Did you? Yeah, know he that? did. Yeah. Yes, I remember yeah. that. All right, I actually forgot. I have to ask the Seeky question. Promo Ooh. code take you get ten dollars off. Go to a football game next year because football is the best sport. Promo code take Seek Geek, uh, ten dollars off. Uh, I read a story about when you were growing up with Jim and you guys split the room. Yeah, and you kind of bamboozled him on the deal. Ah, what? No, Jim he, said that. Yeah, Jim said that. You want to clarify? Because the, the, the story goes... I can't even imagine what the... I mean, the room is split right down the middle. The story goes, you you, you told him... I was responsible for the fish tank. Split too. the room, yeah. and then he realized after you split the room that all of like the electronics and the cool stuff was on your side, and he couldn't access we it. We had no electronics. There was no cool stuff. I had to do the uh -huh. fish bowl. It wasn't even a fish tank. <laughs> The fish, the fish tank got so dirty, fish were jumping out to escape the uh, water. And they thought <laughs> Trying to they had to be suicide. better outside. They committed suicide. <laughs> Two Harbaugh brothers and a fish. I yeah. love it. I mean, it was, it was the only thing he, only real jip complaint he has, he could have, is that the tape across the room, like he was by the door. So I was on the other side. So I had to pass through his territory. Oh. You know, and there's really no access, like path or whatever. Yeah. Driveway to get through. You just had to come through his turf. And I think that... But what could you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he had a chip for the rest of his life and was yeah, like, I'm going to find the it. perfect said, time to drown yeah, in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you like, you like fish so much, you yeah. kept it on your side. I'll, I'll, you're you're, you're <laughs> sleeping with a fish. <laughs> yeah. You fish oh, lover. Man. Um, I actually have a serious question. Uh, so Colin Kaepernick obviously just signed his, uh, he just did whatever settlement it was with the NFL that no one's allowed to talk about. Um, but there was some talk this year that you guys were interested in bringing him in. Mm -hmm. um, what was that evaluation process like for him? Uh, you know, we never got into the football stuff. I, I've been talking – like, I knew him from the time Jim, you know, had him as a quarterback. Mm -hmm. And he's he actually – I mean, from a family standpoint, we knew him real well. So yeah. it, we were kind of – there's a closeness there and everything. So it was real easy to start talking to him about uh, maybe, you know, did he want to come back and play and will we be a good fit and all that. So, so we were talking for quite a while. You know, we ended up signing RG3. That was kind of the way we went for mm -hmm. whatever reasons. Um, but – but uh, it could have happened, and from a football standpoint, it would have been good. I mean, he's a really good quarterback; would have been a great backup for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, and that was that was actually before Lamar right got drafted. So, um, you know, it wasn't based on you know who who your young rookie was or anything. Like right, that. right. Um, all right. Well, thank you. We finally completed the last uh, Harbaugh token. Like I said at the start, yeah, we're it's good we're to be part the token. Of, yeah, we're, we're no, part of the family. What do we get now? That yeah, what do we get? We get like a glass of milk. Well, it's not a glass. You they came in like little cartons, like yeah. little pint cartons. Okay. And they would drink all of yours. Yeah. That's, damn. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got you. I let them drink. That's, you see what happened. But you, I mean, but did you drink milk? No, not enough. No, oh wow, that was a <laughs> not shot. enough. But no, at hey. the end of the day, you have that look. You have the look now. On Jim. what look? The look. Oh, the, the look. The, the look. look. The look. Yeah, the right. look. Yeah. When your yeah. eyes catch each mm -hmm. other and you're like. You know. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> when you see him next time, give him that look. I'm going to try, and mm -hmm. then he'll probably punch me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Coach, thank you Thanks, so much. A little unnecessary shot about my height at the end, but that's okay. <laughs>